What we now know is that if we alter the numbers of top ocean predators, that's big fish and sharks, it has far-reaching consequences for the way we tackle climate change. The numbers of those top order predators, they have a cascading effect on the food web and on the ecosystem generally. And all of that ends up changing the amount of carbon that is locked into the seabed. So the thing about these coastal wetlands, the, the reason that they are so effective at locking up the carbon long term is because they're constantly burying the carbon in the mud, in the soil. And that's building up, even with sea level rise, so it's not just locked up for tens of years, but hundreds, even thousands of years. In, in environments such as this in the mangroves, for example, if we change the abundances of higher order predators, then that affects the numbers of the small animals that live in the mud in the mangroves. And that has flow-on consequences for the amount of carbon that's stored in the soils. So, so it turns out that these this, this narrow, fringing coastal wetland around the edge of the continents is doing a, a power of good for taking carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it very long term in the soil. We're talking uh, in, in, the, in the range of quarter of a trillion kilograms of carbon per year going on uh, every year so long as we don't fiddle with the system. The sort of dollar value on that, you're, you're in the billions around the world every year, probably five billion, that depends very much on which carbon price we use. Australia doesn't have one currently, but if we use the last known one, that's the sort of money we're talking about. Every year, ongoing, forever. <laughs>